Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of a luminous 4K screen paint using ambient light rejection technology. Gain times seven and eight. Pretty soon it's going to be eight because I'll tell you the truth, but I think we're going to pretty much uh, uh, sell off the rights for the black silver because quite frankly, like I said, I'm a big fan of the black technology and that's where it's at. All right, so um, let's get back to this real quick now. In this demonstration, I've seen other black screens out there on the market. I'm not the only one that designs black technology. But as I said before, all black screens are not the same. Now, the reason why our screen paint has a really interesting shade of black, I, it's a um, kind of a, um, a personal signature coating that we had that makes up that particular color. One, there's two reasons. One, it keeps anybody from trying to do a fake side-by-side de -side demonstration by saying, hey, look, I had the same thing. There's a black paint in the can and pour it out and do a fake demonstration. Two, it gives us a different signature from everybody else. It gives us a different idea or different identity than everybody else. So if you look at it against the wall, this is it right here. As you can see, it's black, right? Now, over here, uh, this large draped screen this is a screen I picked up on Amazon. It was claiming to be a black uh, projection screen material that you can stretch over to a frame and you can have your own black screen. And as you're looking at our technology, it's black. But as I said before, it's a different shade of black and it's a signature trade, uh, um, a signature uh, coating. So which means uh, the, the special pigma that we use to make that particular color, it was custom designed for that for the Supreme 8. And like I said, it gives it its own personal identity that separates it from any kind of black screen on the market. So as you stare at it, you're thinking it's black. It is black. It's just a different signature of black. Now, this material right here is, like I said, a material I purchased off of Amazon. It's a black screen. Uh, somebody posted in the comment. Thank you for posting that comment. They were saying, well, it's not a really good demonstration. It's a good demonstration, but to, to pretty much quiet the doubters you should have it smoothed out so i did this is what this screen is this is the cardboard screen that is the material coated onto actually the material actually on a fixed frame and then one half of it is coated with our technology now if you saw this leaning against the screen and i step back it's black it's different, and, and I keep telling people, people say, well, it's not, but it is black. There's multiple shades of black. There's no such thing as straight black. Black has multiple shades to it, not just one. So we go to remove it, you'll see the difference. So I've been in, in a meeting before, and they tried to reverse engineer our technology. They tried to make a similar version to ours, and they didn't realize that the paint, before they saw ours, our paint has a strange color to it. And they were trying to say, yeah, we have your product and so and so and so. So when they showed us the screen, we started laughing because our screen has a signature color to it. That's how we could tell it wasn't ours. Because when we painted ours side by side to their black screen, it came up a different shade of black. All right. Now, now keep in mind, because it has a different shade of black, is that's not what causes the screen to react to white light. There's actually a few other things you have to add in there, which I can't tell you, and I wish I could. Maybe one day when I retire, I'll, I'll tell you. But um, there's, a, there's a special coating in there that allows the screen to be able to generate white light. So we'll set our screen up here. This is what we're going to use. Because, like I said, the fellow who pointed it out, you know, if you want to really make a clear uh, demonstration, you want to make sure that when you do it, you want the surface to be nice and smooth. And good point. Thank you for that. So what I did, I took the same material and I smoothed it out. And same material and I coated our, our technology on this side. Because the problem that you have here, like I said, any black surface, any black surface that you choose will generate contrast problem is it has to be to generate white light and they can't generate white light so the image comes out looking dirty from a distance it looks okay well not really to tell you the truth next to ours but when you get real close to it, you get to get close to it you'll see it's a dirty dirty image all the way up 
That's what you got to watch out for. These are things when I watch demonstrations of people doing black screens, they'll constantly do contrast. It's a given the screen's going to produce contrast. Just like if you do a snowstorm on a white screen, it is a given that a white screen is always going to produce a higher white level. All right, so let's go through my selection of videos. First things first, we're going to go with the uh, Skyworth demonstration. We're going to come in and we're going to do this one right here. I want to show you from the door. Let me get really close because I want you to be to see this up close. This is why I said that white levels are very important on a black screen because you have to be able to pull up a natural color tone. And white is very important as you can see. Without white, uh, the screen may have the ability to pull up a white image, you run the risk of having a muddy, dirty screen. See, right here. Up close and personal, you can see this. Our screens can generate white light. That's why I laugh when I see demonstrations of people taking everyday house paint and sticking into a can and saying, hey, look, this is his paint. This is how it reacts. Like, no, it doesn't react that way. I can prove it to you. I can take a black screen and put it right next to our technology and show you right up close. It generates white light. See how bright and more realistic the skin tone looks? Now, if anybody fakes a demonstration on our company and it comes up looking like this, this is how we know it's not our technology. That's how we know it's just everyday black paint or black material, whatever it may be. Because our technology is designed to generate white light. And it's a different color tone. I felt sorry for this one fellow. He went the cheap route. He went out and he bought like 20 gallons of black paint. He painted his screen with it for his, uh, big, uh, um, some kind of stuff they were doing for a church. And the image came out so muddy and so dirty. And I was trying to explain to him there's a difference between our black technology and black paint. So when you see somebody designing black paint or some kind of black screen technology, they have to be able to prove that the image can put white light you have to have white light in a projection screen I mean, a black screen not only contrast white light is needed see or you just get a dirty image if you don't let me grab me another video here another right here See how clean the color is here? See how dirty it's here? It's not easy to do. It's a very hard thing to do to actually get a black screen to pull white light. It's not easy. It took me years to develop this. And I'm, keep in mind, I've made one after the next after the next, but it wasn't good enough. This right here, the Supreme 8, is one of the best screen paints we've ever developed. Now, it's something I call oversaturation of contrast. That's where a screen produces so much contrast that the image comes out too dark. Now, it may look brighter when it comes to reds and blues, but when it comes to that natural color, which is needed that keeps the image from coming out dirty, it won't show. I had somebody do this to my video one time. They came in into black paint and he put it against their screen and said, hey, look, this is how his, his product reacts. I'm like, okay, one of these days I'm going to out you for what you are. And people will see what my technology does. And it's funny because the phone I had before this one, this is a, uh, this is a Samsung, uh, the, the, the Samsung 10. I just got this phone. 
And man, I mean, I'm, I'm quite impressed on what this, these phones can do now. I mean, my phone was pretty old, but I'm gonna show you the skin tones. So you see it now? This is an everyday, this is a blackout cloth material that was claiming to be a black screen on Amazon. Uh, keep in mind, black paint, black paper, it all does the same thing because this material can pull contrast, but it can't pull a white level. Now, this is what natural skin tone is supposed to look like. This is what our technology does. And that's funny, if I do videos um, showing what my technology can do, I'm hated. Not by a lot of people. I got, I got customers that love what I do, and I, I thank you for that. But I got a majority of people that just don't like me, and I don't know why. But if I do a video and I show them up close and personal what it does, and I debunk all that madness, I'm still, I'm still not liked. Because a person that doesn't like you is just not going to like you. But it doesn't bother me at all. I'm a happy person. I like what I do for a living. And people say, well, you know what? Your paint's too expensive, this, that, and the other. My paint be the black diamond. And like I said, anytime you want to see that document, I tell you, feel free to email me and I'll send you a document where we beat SL Screams. So, like I said, I was talking to a customer who spent, oh my goodness, beautiful. He had a beautiful, let me do an all white screen saver. He has a beautiful home theater, um, uh, movie theater setup. It is freaking phenomenal. I mean, I would love to have something like that at my home. It's gorgeous. And he has an, um, he has a uh, black diamond screen in there. And the money that he spent for it is freaking out, is insane. He has like a hundred and 150 inch. It is freaking, the, the, the price he paid for is insane. So keep in mind that we develop a dark gray, I'm sorry, a black technology that allows you to be able to produce much better uh, images. Now, keep in mind, if you buy a white screen, everybody knows this, and those who don't know this, you may want to listen up on this. If you buy a white screen, a white screen is always going to be cheaper than any other screen. It's always going to be cheaper. Like this motorized projection screen, I got this off eBay for $68. This is $68 because it's a white screen and it's on name brand. And even if it's a name brand, if that screen was dark gray, you're talking about a screen that may cost you eight, nine hundred dollars because it's dark gray. Because that's a dark gray screen is considered to be an HD or 4K uh, screen. That's what they use them for. Now, going back to some of these high-end screens. Now, keep in mind, if you go out, I say keep in mind a lot, I do apologize about that, but it's a bit of a, uh, a tick with me. Um, if you go out and you buy an Elite Dark Star 9, as I said before, Elite Dark Star 9, if you never heard of that screen, look it up. It's one of their Elite flagships. That screen would cost you three grand for a 100 inch. So that's $3,000 for a 100 inch screen. That is not ultra short though compatible. You have to buy a special screen for ultra short though users, which I have upstairs. Now, we have a screen paint. Our screen paint, I think the cheapest kit we have is $274. We're the only company on the market that can produce images outside when other screens don't go out to play. We're the only company that has a screen paint that is ultra short though compatible and it's black. You don't see too many black ultra short though compatible screens. And then on top of that, if you look at a light gray screen or a white screen, that's a screen that's always going to be a cheaper screen. If you take a screen and you add it dark, it's a little bit darker or if it's black, it's going to cost you thousands of dollars depending on what company's brand name is on it. So what our technology does, no one has ever matched any one of our demonstrations. If you think I'm joking, go look on my site. I have challenges that I've placed out there on YouTube for other people to actually match or better our technology. And not one demonstration has ever been matched. It's never been matched. Not one. So if we're in the category of everybody else, everybody else's screens should be reacting the same way our screens are reacting. Think about that. And keep in mind, I've had companies offer me very big contracts to sell out because they want to take my coding and they want to apply it to their screens. 
So if they take my coding and they apply it to a screen like this, right? How much do you think that screen would cost with a big company backing it? You're talking about a screen that went from $68 that now is going to cost you maybe two grand because it has the ability to do all these extra options that other screens can't do. So you got to consider that, you know what I mean? So I think it's a very reasonable price. I would rather spend $270 for a screen paint that can pretty much do 100 inch to 120 inch than spend somewhere around five grand, four to $5,000. If you think I'm joking, do your research, go on Amazon. I don't think Amazon has any of the black technology screens. There is any black, black screens. We don't even have black screens at this moment that does this kind of on this particular level. But go and check um, uh, elite screens and stuff like that with different companies that do design white screens. And you'll notice that a white screen will always be cheaper because it's, it's a screen. It doesn't produce HD, it doesn't produce 4K, it doesn't have the ability to produ um, produce images in well-lit environments. It just doesn't have that at all, period. Consider the fact that screens haven't seen and being like rejection technology where we can do demonstrations outside, other screens are not going to go out there because their screens are automatically going to fade and wash out. They can't do demonstrations outside, but we can do it at 4 o'clock in the evening. So keep in mind, if I sold out my technology right now to another company and they took that technology and applied it to a screen, I guarantee you, bar none, that's going to cost you four to five grand easily. That's the reason why a lot of people don't realize why I got into this business. I got into this business 11 years ago because my first projector was a BenQ MS500. That's the first one I bought. I had two Sony TVs back to back with a dual graphic card, I had a Tesla graphic card, and I had a 2011 motherboard that had around two, check it out, 2011 motherboard, it's a server board. It had 264 gigs of RAM, PC 3000 OC. I used to build computers back in the day. So I had a couple of those. I had about 15, um, um, what do you call the uh, uh, CD, um, um, the uh, SS uh, drives, uh, and I had a Tesla video card. Yes, I got one of those. I, have, I used to have one of those bad boys. I sold that machine, which was a big mistake. So anyway, I had two Sony side to side, and I was basically doing the whole wraparound monitor, you know what I mean? And I thought I had the best system in the world. Like I had the ultimate gaming system. And then I go to my friend's house, who's playing on a console system, and his screen is 120 inches, and I'm blown away by it. Freaking amazed. Because keep in mind, I'm 51. So when I'm at 51 years old, when I projectors in my era were those reel-to-reel -reel ones, you know what I mean? Where the, the, the tape has the little lines that squeak me down, so get the weird sound in the background. I grew up in that era. So for me, a projector looks like a reel-to-reel -reel that you feed the tape to. So that's what I'm thinking. You know, I, I didn't know anything about the projectors upgrade. You know what I mean? Last time I seen a projector, that was around that time. And I didn't really dabble in that era. I was more into TVs and all that stuff. So when I seen this projector, I'm asking all these questions. Can you put HDMI to it? Uh, did they make them 4K or 1080p? I'm asking all these questions. And my buddy is the one who taught me everything there is about projectors because he's a projector movie, a movie buff and a projector guru. So he taught me all this stuff about projectors and everything. So I sell my two TVs for a cheap price. And I go out and go on, um, I went on um, Amazon and I ordered myself at BenQ MS500, it was 600 to 800, my first time buying a projector, okay, 600 to 800, it was 2,500 lumens, got it home, set it up, hit the wall with it, and it sucked, because my TVs were 10 times more advanced than that screen, and I just feel like I lost money, and I just feel like I lost my TVs and everything, so I was kind of bummed out on the whole thing, so I called my buddy up, and I said, hey, look, I need something to make the screen look fantastic, I, your screen looks amazing, what do you have? At that particular time, the hottest screen on the market was a Grey Wolf, look those up, the girl, Grey Wolfs, they were expensive, they were $3,000 just for a 100 inch, he got one on a good deal at a garage sale, and it had a huge mass of stain in the middle of the screen, so he got it for a good price, but he didn't care, he was gaming on it anyway, so long story short, um, did a lot of research. Um, I went on YouTube and I tried that free YouTube screen paint that came with it. Uh, they had a YouTube mixture a long time ago that you can make your own free screen paint. I did that one right there because I couldn't afford a couple grand for a screen. And uh, a long story short, um, push go to shove, you know, looking out there for trying to find a good screen. And all these screens were 2000 3000 And I realized that if you got a white screen, it was cheap. If you wanted an HD gray screen, it was expensive. And it was like, come on, you got to be freaking kidding me. Who charges $3,000 for a projection screen? And at this particular time, Goose Screen was the hottest screen paint on the market. Goose Screen was charging anywhere from $800, $800 for a gallon of their paint when they first came out. 
Yeah, I, I'm not doing eight hundred dollars for a gallon of paint. So this is where the insanity, all this crazy stuff. If you wanted that true HD image, you know what I mean, that true HD gray, you had to pay the money for it. You had to pay some serious money for it. So I didn't think it was fair that majority of most videos at that particular time on YouTube were all white screens. Someone could afford these insane screens. So. That's when I took it upon myself to research and study and all the other crazy stuff I went through, tons and tons of videos and everything, to develop a screen paint that can do the exact same thing or better than these big end screens on the market and just charge everybody a reasonable price. And if you think in the past 11 years, I haven't been offered contracts and sell out deals and all kinds of stuff, but I've refused them. Look at me, I live in a mansion. I don't live in a mansion. I've been in business for 11 years. I don't live in a mansion. I don't drive a fancy car and all that other crazy stuff because I don't sell out. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't sell out. If you're going to make, if you're going to, and then later on, you have people to come out now. When I was in that era, when I was designing these screen paints, it was fantastic because I was designing a screen. I was doing demonstrations against Black Diamond and DMP Supernova and Daylight Screens. I was going out there and I was getting every sample I could get my hands on. Call these companies. Look, I need a sample. Go and do it, throw it up on YouTube and blow it out on YouTube. Look, we did the same thing as that screen. Same thing as that screen. Got a few court orders here and there, a few threats from a few companies, whatever. You know what I mean? Just keep on chugging along, doing what I do best. So bottom line is later on, you started coming out with these mixtures. Mixtures started popping up, and these are people that are doing fast, quick uh, screen paints with low ambient light environments, high-powered projectors, and they're cutting a lot of corners. They do something called light dodging, and that's something you have to look at, too, also, too, when you watch demonstrations. You have to look at the environment. The environment tells the entire story of the screen, because if you're just seeing, and I've seen this many times, if you're seeing a demonstration and the screen's here, and sometimes this is what I like. I like when they have, like, a pocket and they push the screen inside the pocket and then what they do is they put a light here and they put a light here and they put some lights here and here and they'll have window light coming in there and a little bit of window light coming back here and it gives it the illusion that the room is filled with ambient light but what you don't realize is that none of the light is making contact with the screen that's why in my last house when i had condensed lighting I would turn off the light, I would turn on the lights, and you would see, I would turn off the projector, and you would see the condensed lighting hitting the screen. That's why I was doing all those demonstrations with all that light nailing the screen. You can see light physically hitting the screen. That'll show you exactly how much ambient light the screens can take in. So this why, in this house, this is why we do all our demonstrations out there. Because there is no way you can have ambient light controlled environment if you're outside. How does the tech work with Ultra Short though? Hey, happy you asked me that question. How are you doing today? John, let's go upstairs. I have my Ultra Short though fired up right now, one of my screens. Mind you, I watch cartoons. Right there, that is my Optima GT 5500. Sorry about the mess. All right, it's in the morning. All right, so my place is a little messy right now. This is my Optima GT 5500 Ultra Short though projector. I'm doing, you know what, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm happy you're doing well. Um, this is an Optima GT 5500, 3600 lumen, 20,000 to one contrast. My screen is 126 inches. Now also too, for those of you that are interested in Optima projectors, if you go to Projector Central, and if they tell you that um, you can't use, you can only get up to 100 inches, that's a lie. You can actually get bigger than 100 inches. I've done demonstrations on this projector outside and I got to 150 inch screen. The trick is that black technology allows to be able, I'll, I'll put a video there because it's hard to explain to it. If you do 150 inch or 120 inches on a ultra short throw projector on a white screen, the image deteriorates. It's not because of the projector, it's because the screen doesn't have the ability to pick up contrast. And that's why it deteriorates. So it doesn't have the ability to pick up contrast. I'm watching my cartoons in here. If you do it on a black screen, black screens are designed to pick up detail. The image is going to pick up a lot better. And you're, and you're not going to lose that much picture quality. Which I'll show you a demonstration where I had the Optima Ultra Short Throw here in the demonstration. And I had it overlapping the entire screen. And you can see with the black screen, the image came up crystal clear. This is 120 and 69. Optima GT 55 or 56 or any design, they said to 100 inches, it was able to fill out this screen with no problem, but the outside screen completely deteriorated because 
this area right here doesn't have the ability to pick up contrast because it's a white surface. So I will post it at the bottom for you, John. I want you to check that out. Um, also, too, I'll have some, I'll have some other videos uh, in the link uh, using Ultra Short Throw on contrast and other demonstrations we use the Optima GT55 for. But yes, it is Ultra Short Throw compatible, and that's what I was talking about, that the amazing thing about the screen paint is the fact that you don't have to go out and buy two, two projection screens. Because in two projection screens, you're going to have to have one for ultra short throw, and you have to buy another one for your long throw. With this, it's all in one. So you can use this with long throw, or you can use it with short throw, you can use it outside, it's up to you. And this right here is my Sony projector. This is my Sony VP, I think, uh, VP uh, FH30. So that just shows you right up close what you're getting. And I'll take the lights out real quick. Drop the lights. Let's get it nice and dark in there for you. Let's see for yourself. That's why I said not all black screens are the same. Let's take and do this the same demonstration I'm doing right here. Not all black screens are the same. Our screen just has the ability to pull up a higher white level. But yeah, it's ultra short throw compatible. I've seen some of the ultra short throw projection screens. They are not cheap. Good gracious, they're not cheap. But yeah. And on top of that, you can get, let me show you real quick. I like to do my um, football highlights. I may switch up series and show some videos off of that. Just trying to find something else here. For you guys let's go in and get a food so i'm over here on my phone just going right now with my phone let's go in here and get uh demonstration i want to show you something here this video goes all the way back because i was playing this last night See how dirty the image looks? Skin tone. This is supposed to be real skin tone. This is what I mean by oversaturation of contrast, contrast levels with a screen. I will put my email. Keep in mind when your messages pop up on my end, they disappear real fast. All right, so. Check in the comment section when the video uploads and you will be able to see all my information there for my company and you can send me an email, we can talk right from there. Now see how it looks good here? The problem is, is that you're not getting natural skin tones. There we go. I had to get her head to move over some. See? That's one of the things you have to watch when you look at black screen paint. It looks nice here, but it's not. The minute it moves over, see our technology? Skin tone is supposed to look real. Now imagine if a company like DMP Supernova or Black Diamond had this technology. They could go out and buy Keep in mind, they can go out and buy themselves the cheapest white projection screens on the face of the planet and they could code it with this technology and automatically have a $5,000 screen. So they'd probably pay, like keep in mind, these screens right here on the floor, I got from uh, um, eBay, they're $68. They're 60, a 92 inch 69 is $68. Now, if that's $68 for that screen, right? And Screen Innovation has their name on the side of it and it's coded with this technology. How much do you think that screen would cost you? Mm, so, there you go. I charge you an arm and a leg.
Each screen had that technology. Do you know how much money they would save? Their overhead, they paid $68 for their screen, and all they had to do was code it with this technology. You think about, if you're getting four to $5,000 for a screen, and your overhead was $68, and you brought the right to the technology to be able to paint anything you want. Think about that. $68 per screen. Out of four to five thousand dollars. That's a massive overhead. All right. Um, before we leave out of here, I want to show John a little bit more on the screen upstairs. So we're going to take the video and shut it off here. And we're going to pop upstairs. I'll do this same video upstairs. My cartoons are playing upstairs. Early in the morning, I like to watch my cartoons. It's part of my happy time. I watch my cartoons in the morning. Come on. I gotta sweep my stairs, I know. We're gonna take you to the kitchen, but the kitchen right now is a horror show. So anywhere I walk in this environment, that screen has to pull up. And this is in a fully lit environment. One of the problems a lot of people have with ultra short throws and projection screens is the angle gain. They come up dark. That's my soundboard. Is dark. That's why I don't do ambient light controlled environments because when you do an ambient light controlled environment pretty much you're making the environment comfortable for the screen and that's a bad idea if you do a lot of demonstrations with the screen sitting in the dark that's a bad idea because that screen gets comfortable to that dark environment you got to stress test your screens you got to put them through crap you got to hope hope they fail when i test the screen outside i'm hoping the screen fails because that allows me to see any imperfections that the screen may have that need to be fixed. I don't want a screen when I first develop it. If it comes off perfect, hey, I'm a happy camper. I really am. But I'm expecting to see failure somewhere along the line because that allows me to fix the problem. So I can't stick a screen in a comfortable environment because say if I got a screen in an ambient lit dim environment you're watching right now, and I take that screen and I do all my demonstrations that way, and then you get home and you stick your screen in this environment and it washes out on you. That's why you don't stick them in ambient light and projection um, um, environments. And it's like if you go out and you got a storefront and you're buying bulletproof glass for your storefront and the only thing they tested that bulletproof glass on was a 38. Somebody comes there the next day with a 50 cal, would you stand behind that glass? You got to stress test it. Everything has to be stress test. The brakes in your car have to be stress test. Last thing you want is be going down a hill and your brakes knock out on you because they didn't stress test your brakes. You gotta put your screens to punishment. And people say, when I first started doing demonstrations on ambient light and hitting the screen outside and hitting the screen with tons of light, and people are like, you know what, you're going too far with it. Who uses that much light on the screen? Well, nobody does. But I guarantee if you stick it in your environment, it's gonna work. And I really appreciate the likes. I really do. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in and watch the demonstration. 
You know, even if I get one person in, if I get a couple people in, I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. You know what I mean? I'm not into getting hundreds and hundreds of views and everything like that. I'm just happy that I get a chance to share what I do. Uh, over here on my phone again. So if you see the camera moving side to side, that's why. I love doing the Street Fighter. I love watching gaming on here. Yeah. I'm, like I said, I do apologize. If you did send, if you said, if you put a mention in really quick. I apologize if I didn't see it or didn't answer to your message. I do apologize for that. It's due to the fact that the message is on my end because I have my camera on a um on um, panorama mode. I will get a um, image. I'll get your image for a minute and then it'll disappear. So, like I said, check at the bottom of our comment section or inside. Check the comment section or check and the video description. There'll be, there, my email will be in there. Just email me. And I'll answer whatever questions you need. All right, let's take our lights out for those of you that are itching to keep the lights out. Burn in the house. I gotta get some other stuff because I, I don't want to keep typing the same thing over and over again. You're right about that. It's something to do with those bastards in the mat here. All right, let's go over to uh. It's the same. It's the same thing. Yes, we do ship to overseas. Actually, we ship to overseas for free. We ship anywhere in the world for free. So if you live in Japan, you live in Rome, you live in Italy, anywhere you live at, we ship it to you for free. There's no ship. We don't. We've never charged for shipping. The only time I have to charge for shipping, unless it's a package combo deal, which involves a projector. And that's kind of expensive to ship over because in order for us to do that, we have to raise the price on the projector. And I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep it at a certain price. But as for our screen paints, yeah, we ship them for free. There's no charge. Last but not least, I got to put I got to put my fish shoes on. I love my fish. No, it's insane for a person who loves fish. This is my aquarium. It's so sad, man. I, I I got this aquarium and I've just never had time. I've been so busy. I just haven't had time to buy fish for it. That's really sad, but I, I do like fish. going to hopefully because the day I was going to do some outdoor some more outside demonstrations oh check this out this is I don't know if you've seen this before this is my Casio projector I had two of these in my lifetime but this is a really cool projector you might want to check this out this is lamp free there's no lamp
in this projector whatsoever. And it's also uh, DLP uh, laser and lead hybrid. So it's DLP base, but the projector itself is, um, is, uh, is uh, if you've seen these before on eBay, and if you get one for 150 bucks, grab it because they are expensive. They are expensive. Um, they can cost you maybe between maybe four or 500 bucks. You know, some, some people that might think it's kind of ex not expensive, but this is an amazing projector. It is laser and lead hybrid. So I want to show you something interesting about laser projectors. And sometimes people don't point this out to you. Um, you got to be careful with these things. These things can mess you up pretty bad and you'll mess up your peripheral vision. You see that little warning symbol right there, all that information right there. Let me show you something. This is the cat on a laser projector. See how reflective that is? The reason why that's reflective is because even if you have the projector off and it's still in standby mode, that little light is still on, this, the laser is active. You walk in front of this and you'll get a, I've had, I've done this before. I had one in the, old, I think the second house we were in. I had the projector on and I didn't have the cap on it because I'm thinking once I turn it off, I turn it off. Yeah, the Optima Short Throw Projector is still available on the website. We got people that are inquiring about that one, but I'll, I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. But what you have to be careful about these particular projectors, the laser and LED projectors, is the fact that even though if the projector is off, you have it in standby mode, any one of these lights are on, unless you have it physically unplugged. Um, on Okay, so basically the Short Throw Projector it is available on our website. We it's an Optima Ultra Short Throw Projector, 3200 lumens. It is, I think W, I think W A, sorry, W A X. I'm sorry, it's W X G A. No, not W W X G A. Sorry about that. Not that. Not the high res. Um, it is. It comes with a nine by twelve blackout cloth. Yes. If you if you give me if, okay. So anyone who's interested in the screen paint. Anyone who's interested in getting uh, the product, um, when the video is done, um, at the in the comment section, check the comment section of the video. You will see our website and you will see our email address where we can answer all your questions. And you will see our website. We can get a chance to look at the wall, more videos than I have here. And you'll get a chance to see all the stuff we have in our marketplace. But I'll put all that information down there for you. All right. So. I just want to warn you about these particular projectors because I don't want to see anybody go through what I went through. So I walked downstairs and the projector was active and it caught me in the side of the face and I ended up just seeing white blots in front of my eyes all day. It pretty much, it was pretty much, I was doing Stevie Wonder impersonations, not to offend Stevie Wonder in any way, but that's what I was doing all day. It messed me up pretty bad and it scared the dead out of me because I literally thought that I was going to lose my vision and I need my vision for my work. So I came downstairs and it's flash went off on the side of my face. And it's because the reason why the cat on this projector is reflective is because when the laser is active, when you put that in, the laser is bouncing back and forth. It's bouncing back and forth in the projector. It's hitting the lens and bouncing back and forth because it's active. If you take that cap off, even though that projector is off and that when those indicator lights are on, that laser is active. So you may want to uh, make sure that if you buy one of these, if it doesn't come with a lens cap, don't buy it. Because you will hurt yourself or somebody else. It's, God forbid if one of your dogs or animals walk in front of that thing, you don't want that to happen. But other than that, it's an amazing projector because it's lamp free. There's no lamp in it. You can burn this thing all day long and it will never ever burn out. Because it's completely lamp free. Now I have a friend of mine who has one of these and what they did was they cut the wall out, right? And they put a little shelf system in here and they bought an ultra short throw. They make an ultra short throw version of this, but it's kind of expensive. They do make an ultra short throw. And what they did was they stuck the projector inside. Now they have to worry about any heat accumulating because the projector doesn't give off any heat. It doesn't make any noise because there's no lamp in there to keep cool. There's no fans. So they stuck it in there. And then what he did was he took a screen, took one of our screens. He extended it about that far from the screen and they push the projector back and the screen sits right here and he can remote control it's like a tv on his on his wall it's the coolest thing ever and they have all the ports for hdmi and stuff like that if i do get another one of these because i got one this for from a merchant for a good price i'll do a package deal on this if i do get another one but i just want to tell you 
You know, I don't buy them unless they have that, that, that lens cap on. If you see one without the lens cap, don't buy it. Uh, the distance from the Optima. Now, keep in mind, uh, the um, Optima GT55, which I have here, the screen size, they said that the only screen size you can get out of it is 100 inches. My screen is 126 inch, 16.9. So you can't get a bigger size out of it. The screen just starts to deteriorate once you do this on a white or gray screen. I'll put that video up to see it for yourself. But I'm probably sitting probably more than a foot away from my screen. When I have time, next video I'll measure it out and you can see it for yourself. But I'm more than a foot away from the screen. But I'm far enough back to fill out 126 inches. Because when I, when I was doing my research, I needed an ultra short throw, especially when I was moving into this place right here. And I had to figure out where I was. If you look at my, 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 um, my, uh, my dining room, there is no place in here to put a screen. There's windows everywhere in this house. There's no place to put a screen. So when I was looking at the house, I love the house. It's got a deck. It's got a big backyard. And I fell in love with it. I'm thinking, there's no place to put a screen. I'm used to having a screen in every house. So this area right here was a dining room area. So I turned the dining room area into my theater room, theater room slash entertainment room. But the problem was between where the dining room sits and where the wall sits, I wouldn't have a big enough screen for 100 inches. 100 inches wouldn't even hit from here to here because the dining room is real narrow. So that's why I went with the ultra short throw. And when I was doing the research on the ultra short throw, they said, well, the Optima only does 100 inches. And at the time, I already had a screen already. And my screen was um, 126 inches. So you can see my dilemma there. You know, I want I, the, these other knockoff projectors. I think it's called the X, X Sumo or X. I don't know the name of it. I do apologize. If you do, put it in the comment section for me. But that particular projectors, I don't trust them. I don't trust them at all. Um, due to the fact that the projector does have a few fake specifications. The first one that came out was supposed to be 5,000 lumens. Do you have any idea how powerful 5,000 lumens on, an, on a regular long throw is? It's insane. So imagine 5,000 lumens on a projector that sits at least about a couple of inches from your wall. Ah, thank you so much. I do appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate any kind of support we get for our company. I really support, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, so you got to think about that. 5,000, anytime a projector says it's ultra short though and 5,000 lumens, you don't need 5,000 lumens at all. My projector is 3,600 lumens. 5,000 lumens, keep in mind, reflecting off a white wall. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a bit of snow blind right there. Greetings from Seattle. Hey, what's going on from Seattle? How are you doing? How are you doing? I love to meet people from other states and other countries. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's an amazing world. I mean, back then, we didn't even have this technology. When I was coming up, we didn't have this technology. We, when I was coming up, a phone was in your home, and that was it. That was it. You had that long cord that went from one end all the way to the next way over there, and you had to make your phone calls. I came up also to around when I was just around when, around when Rotary was just coming out. Not, it's not, not coming out too old, too old. Um, I was around when Rotary was just leaving and they were doing push buttons on the phones. That's when I came out of there. But I remember when cell phones first came out and I had a cell phone, I had a brick phone, a brick phone. And I'm gonna tell you something, you think your phone bill is expensive? And this is off the topic, this is just something to laugh about. When the brick phones first came out, those of you who remember this can back me up on this. When they came out, they were around close to $1,000 for a phone. Now you probably say, yeah, phones cost $1,000. Now you pay $1,000 for a phone. Okay. All right. But when those phones came out, it was $4 a minute for incoming and outcoming, which means if I called you, you're going to pay that provider $4 a minute. Yep. That's what it was when I was coming up. Yeah. That, that was something to complain about. And you get your phone bill and you think it's your social security number when it's actually how much you got to pay back. But I just love this technology. But that's what I love about the ultra short throws. I like the fact that, and I do love ultra short. At first I wasn't keen on them, but I do like them. I really do. But like I said, be careful. Also too, I want to add real quick before I sign off. Please be careful about buying knockoff projectors. 
our company does not support them in any way whatsoever. Um, I don't like these projectors due to the fact that they flood the market. They overshadow a lot of very good projectors and they promise a lot of bells and whistles that they can't deliver on. I've done demonstrations on these projectors before. If you see something that looks too good to be true, please stay away from it. Usually when I see these demonstrations, and I feel sorry people do these demonstrations on YouTube showing off these projectors. If you ever notice, like I said, the environment tells the whole story. You will see that they always use a white wall or a white screen and the environment is pitch black dark because that's the only way that projector is going to be to pull up because the lumens are falsified. Those projectors do not work on our technology whatsoever. And like I said, I feel sorry because I bumped into customers that paid pretty good penny for some of these knockoff projectors and they just weren't getting what they were supposed to be getting from the projectors to begin with. So like I said, stay away from them. You do a much better job just going out and get yourself an NEC or get yourself, what, go on eBay. eBay has a lot of good projectors for sale, you know what I mean? But like I said, they don't come with the combo paint. So that's what makes ours a little bit more interesting because we add in that technology. We add in that paint that allows that projector to look fantastic. Hmm, let me see something real quick. If I have the time, if I have the time, let's go downstairs. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna get my crappy projector. I got a projector I paid $45 for on eBay. It is very crappy, but it's still a good projector. Stop forecasting right there. All right, let's pop downstairs for a minute. Because I think that combo deal comes with the projector and it comes with two quarts of our Supreme 8. It also comes with a blackout cloth surface that is 9 feet by 12 feet. You'll be able to paint a um, you'll be able to paint a screen size of 150 inch with that kit. So that's what makes the difference when it comes to our technology. All right. So first things first, let's come over here and let's uh, disconnect some of these goodies. I have quite a few projectors over here. I have, this is my NEC 3700 lumen projector. So I brought one of these right here. This doesn't have HDMI port on the back of it. This one I like right here. This is an Epson. I love this projector right here. But this is, uh, this, the lens comes out. You can pop the lens out of this projector. This is an extended long throw, which means it takes this projector, literally you have to have about 18 feet just to get 100 inches out of it. So it's kind of like a movie theater projector. There is right there. That's the projector that we have on the website right now. That's the Optima short throw projector right there. Um, this right here. Let me show you real quick. Oh, this projector right here. Do you know what that is right there? That's a Mitsubishi projector right there. Everything on that projector is automatic. Everything. Everything. When I mean everything, everything. You see this lens right here? everything focus everything zoom keystone this thing is amazing i got this for a thousand dollars man and i was lucky to get it for a thousand dollars this is a six thousand lumen projector but i can't use it and i'll tell you why number one i need the freaking remote control which costs an arm and a leg for it and i'm going to find a remote control sooner or later i'm going to get that remote control because i want to play with this projector and then number two, it started flickering, which means the lamp is about to die. So I got to get a good price on the lamp. The lamp is kind of pricey. And that's what I tell a lot of people also, too. When you buy a projector, a little cool trick, um, before you buy a projector, um, take the model number and find out how much it's going to cost to replace the lamp. Because, like I said, the way projectors are made now, it does take forever to blow a lamp out. It really does. I mean, you back in the day, you could blow a lamp out pretty fast on a projector. But... Um, uh, just in case, if you do buy a, uh, a projector, we all we put all new lamps in ours. So any projectors I buy, I take them out and I put new lamps in them from the door. But if you do buy a projector um, on eBay, and some of the projectors are venue projectors, like the real big boy, this is a venue projector right here, big boy projector. You want to make sure you want to check before you buy that projector where you bid on it. You want to make the, sure you want to find out how much the lamp it's going to cost you. Because I saw, was it a Ronco? I saw a Ronco. I think it was a Ronco. I saw a Ronco. No, it wasn't a Ronco. It was a Ronco. It was a freaking Sony projector with the big black one, the big venue one. I think it was it was an 8K projector. And they wanted a, the price they wanted wasn't bad. They wanted like $2,000 for it. 
And that projector is a very, very costly, very expensive projector. And I thought it was for parts. And then I find out that the lamp was going to cost me like three, two, maybe two grand, 1500 to two grand. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. So that's why I said when you buy a projector, if you buy one on eBay, you're doing some eBay shopping on some cheap projectors or whatever you're doing, I tell you to basically go in and um, and uh, check and see how much the lamps will cost you first before you paste down the money. Because sometimes the lamp will cost you more than the projector. You know, it's like buying a vintage car. You buy a vintage car, we all know that the parts are going to be expensive. It's going to cost you a lot of money to, to fix parts on that car. So, you know. Let me pick this up. This is a freaking heavy, heavy projector. It really is. Ugh. I bought two of them. I bought two of these bad boys. When I found out how much they wanted for these projectors, these projectors are $4,000 a piece. And when I went on eBay, one guy was selling one for $300. The other one was selling one for $350. Bucks. I bought both of them. Yeah, I bought both of them. That was a deal I couldn't pass up, and I think it, it would cost me two hundred bucks to replace the um, the uh, two hundred dollars to replace the um, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the lamp. But keep in mind, four thousand dollars for a brand new one, and I only paid three hundred fifty bucks for that projector. And the other one was fifty bucks. All right, this is my old one. I've done this one on live. This is my old one. Oh man, you know what? I'm gonna get myself a GoPro. I'm gonna show you guys how to build some really cool freaking screens. I got a screen project I'm working on right now and this screen literally has speakers built into the back of the screen. They're flat JVC, the JVC, am I saying it right? JVC, yeah, JV, JVC, whatever. They're flat speakers built into the back of the frame. Oh man, yeah, I'm, I'm building me a, a um, a gaming screen it is going to be beautiful when i get done with it but i'm gonna i'm gonna actually start sharing the blueprints for some of this stuff because over there that is my frame for my motorized projection screen stand that has lead lights i think i showed that off quite a bit i'm going to be uploading the blueprints on how to build it. it's a very easy build it's not expensive anybody can do it anybody can put it together it doesn't require a lot of cutting and sawing and all that stuff you know what i mean the measurements are pretty short and to the point but it shows you how you can build your own stand Put it outside and you can take your motorized projection screen you can hang it up and you can take it in when you're done with it so that's why it's in here not out there in the rain getting jacked up all right so on the back of the projector i'm going to show you something now a lot of the some of the projectors you might get you may buy you may have one in the house may not have an hdmi port on the back of your projector i bought quite a few of these you want to be careful you want to look for one that has an audio port on the side if it doesn't have an audio port on the side, don't buy it because what's going to happen is you're going to have to figure, configure some way to get sound out of your HDMI signal. And this is the best converter I've ever purchased. Let me see if I can get the, the name of it. Or I'll put the link in there for you. But I got this off of um, Amazon for about, I think about 10 bucks. Best one I've ever bought. Some of these, when you buy them, they don't carry the signal too well. And the signal will die on you and you'll get this flicker where it'll cut on and cut off and cut off and cut off and you don't want that crap. So this is the best one. So you just plug that into the back of your VGA port right there. Make sure I got this right because I'm going to bend any of the needles, the pins. All right. And it's raining over here in Philly. All right, so you plug it in there, right? So then you have your HDMI port. And this is fantastic. If you want to run your Chromecast to the back of it and you don't have an HDMI port, you just plug that right there. Right, sit right there. Right there. Right, snug as above. It shows you how old this projector is. It's a very old projector. And then you come over here and you grab your soundbar right here. I have to tip mine up because mine's um soundbar. So soundbar and you plug it right into the back of here. Sorry, if you can't see that, I do apologize. There you go. There you go, and that's it. It's all hooked up. So then when I turn it on, oh, duh, we don't have power. All right, I done messed up. We need this, because without this, we can't turn on jack. All right, so we put this back here like so. Now I got this upside down? Oh, yes, I do. All right, there we go. 
Now, you see how old this projector is? This is a really old projector. This projector is manufactured in 1999. It is so old, it doesn't even have 16.9. It only has uh, 4.3. That's how old it is. It's an XGA at 1100 lumens, and it's 720p, of course. And this thing is really old. It actually has an S video jack and audio video components. and all. That's, that's the end of it right there. So let's fire this bad boy up. And if you want to know the model number, there it is right there. If you can find information on it, please share, because I only found a little bit of information on it. I do know that the contrast on this projector is um, 400 to 1. Uh, Sony's have 3,000 to 1. It does take a while to power up, literally. See, it only does 4.3. That's how old it is. But when I got it, I was like, where's the option for 16.9? I couldn't find it. And it was like, there, there is none. That's all what it is. But it's a nice projector. I like it. I paid $45 for it. That's all I paid for it. I think we may be a little too high up. No, no, we have, there's, no, there's no lens shift. I'm used to having lens shift on everything. That's why. I'm used to having some sort of lens shift on here. All right. What we'll do is uh, we'll have to improvise. Um, let me go grab the crate. I think this may be a little too much. Or not enough. Hmm. I'm going to do this side right here. Yeah. That's good enough. And we'll do a OLED burning fireplace. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. You know what I really want to do? What I really want to do, I have some investments that I made way back. They're about to cash in very soon. Now, I was joking with the fact of thinking about retiring. But what I'm thinking about doing next, because I was, I was talking to a friend of mine and said, you know what? You should come up with your own form of motorized projection screens. You would have enough money to be able to do it. And I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about bringing out high-tech and high-tech uh, motorized projection screens and fixed-frame screens and charging a very reasonable price so everybody could have them. Let me see what we got going on here. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. That's what I'm thinking about doing. All right. So I did that. And that's my phone dying behind me. All right, so here we are in the demonstration. What I'm showing you, my projector is now. Some people think that they have to get an expensive projector with a twenty thousand to one. They have to get a projector uh, with a. If you think you have a white screen, and I've done this before, if you have a white screen, going back to uh, some of the bells and whistles when it comes to these cheaper projectors out here on the market, these knockoffs, they will promise you a lot of um, of bells and whistles that will be completely useless on a screen. Period. And that's why when you watch a lot of demonstrations with these knockoff projectors um, that may cost you $45, that may cost you $200, um, those particular projectors will um, promise you 7,000 lumens, 5,000 lumens. This is a projector with 1,100 lumens. That's it. Now, 1,100 lumens is traveling 9 feet, and it's making contact with the screen. It has a 400 to 1 in contrast. So this projector... Keep in mind, if you see a projector online that's saying that it has a 7,000 or 5,000 or 4,000 lumen count, and you can't see that screen in a fully lit environment, that just tells you right there that the projector has false specifications. Now, one of the things this technology does, and I don't care, like I said, 
with our black technology, it's not going to be able to pull up that projector at all. And just not because the lumen counts on that projector are so low that it does not show up on our black screens at all, period. And I've done this demonstration before. It will show up on a white screen a little bit, but it will not show up on a black screen. Now, keep in mind that if you guys say it a lot, sorry about the thing, keep in mind over and over again. Uh, understand that if you get a projector with a 20,000 to 1 contrast, you will never see that on a white or gray screen. You'll never see it because a white or gray screen does not have the ability to pick up contrast. But if you go out and get a projector like an NEC that has a 400 to 1 contrast, you're going to pick it up regardless because the screen is black. But here's the interesting thing about it. Now, I'm going to buy a knockoff projector. I'm going to buy a name brand. Everybody's used to a knockoff projector. I'm going to put that projector right here. Mark my words. This demonstration is going to happen. I'm going to put that projector right here. I'm going to show you these two projectors side by side. When they hit our black screen, I've done this before, the knockoff at 7,000 lumens compared to a projector that has 1,100 lumens, this projector is going to show up on our black technology. The knockoff is going to completely disappear because the lumens are fake on it. And it also gives you an eye opener that if you have a light gray screen, not to knock anybody, if you have a white screen or a light gray screen, I bought an Optima at 1,001 contrast, the other guy told me. Was, no, it has nothing to do with your black levels. It's your screen. Your screen can't pick it up. Keep in mind how powerful you just said your projector lumen count, your projector's contrast is. This is a 400 to 1, 400 to 1 contrast in a fully lit environment at nine feet away from the screen. So our technology can pick it up. But you can't pick it up here. Now, I'll turn the lights out because some people are saying, well, it's not fair. You have all your lights on and the lights should be out. I'll show you what you get. And I've done this in a dark environment. If you want to see that demonstration, email me. I'll send you some real interesting videos. That'll be a bit of an eye opener for you. Four hundred to one, forty-five dollar projector. This is what our technology would do to a forty-five dollar, four hundred to one, seven twenty p at eleven hundred lumen projector. It's not your projector. Now, listen. If your projector's name brand, it isn't your projector. It's your screen. All right, I got to get out of here real quick. Hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. Thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. I really enjoyed the time we spent together. Um, please check out the comment section. I will have posted information on our website, information on how you can contact us. Contact us. Sorry about downloading tire right now. Contact us, and um, we'll, uh, if you're interested in ordering, uh, keep in mind. Uh, I say keep in mind a lot, I'm sorry, but it's a bit of a tick there. Um, we will ship it to you anywhere in the world for free, so shipping is absolutely free no matter where you live. All right, on top of that, we are having a holiday sale. I think the holiday sale is going to be going on until uh, Christmas Eve. No, not Christmas, New Year's Day, New Year's Day. So it's going to be a pretty, it's a pretty big sale going on. Nope, I'm sorry. He lied to you. You're looking at it right here live. It, it, I'm, I, I've done this before with the 20,000 to 1 Optima. If I got, if I'm, if I'm picking up an image really quick, if I'm picking up an image on 400 lumens, I'm mean, sorry, not 400 lumens, but 400 to 1 contrast on this old 1999 projector, and you got a projector that's a, a, a new year, a, a new model. No, white screens can't pick up contrast. They can't do it. I don't care how high the black levels that you may have on your projector, you're just not going to be able to pick it up. It's impossible. It's like trying to get water out of a stone. It's not going to happen. It's not going to pick up. And in order for you to get some kind of decent contrast, you're going to have to be in the dark to do it. That's the sad part about it. Here, let me show you something real quick. I got about three minutes of life on my phone. Let's see if we can find it before my phone dies on me. All 
That's a star field demonstration. Do that quite a bit. Take this. I'm gonna show, put a link where you can get this video from, and turn out the lights. Turn this demonstration on. And if your screen comes out this color, or if it comes out that color, the bottom line is your contrast is it's not working. Now, really quick, let me see if I can find if I could find it real quick in here. Because I got stuff thrown around in the shop all the time. My phone just died. Other my phone just died. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, let me turn my lights on real quick because I'm not going to be able to find Jack in here. <clears throat> let me show you something really quick. Yeah, it's a shame. Like I said, people will sell you just about anything and I'll feed you any kind of gimmick to make you buy. That's why I do these live demonstrations so you can see exactly what you're getting. Because, you know, where in the world is it? I know I've got it around here somewhere. It's a huge sheet of gray. Here we go. This is what I'm looking for. This is dark gray. Some people think if you have dark gray, dark gray will, go, will pull a black level. Now, when we developed a screen paint, we have a screen paint we developed called, uh, it was called, uh, it's called, um, oh man, I can't think of the name of it. Supreme 8 the Titanium Black Silver. And I explained that the Titanium Black Silver does not have the ability to be able to pick up um, black due to the fact that it's not black. Only black screens can pick up black. And that's a dark gray screen. And we designed this. This is our technology leaning against the screen. As I said before, the only screen that can pick up true contrast is a black screen. And that's a dark gray screen. So we have dark gray, we have light gray, and we have white. Let's take our lights out. Now you have a better chance of contrast with a dark gray screen. <clears throat> but it's not going to be to pick up a black level. Okay, but yeah, it's a shame because no, it has your black levels and your projector. Like I said, if you have a a twenty thousand to one uh, contrast, um, it doesn't make a difference. You're not going to see it. It's just not going to pick up at all. Period. You're just not going to see it. It's a shame, but you know people will tell you just about everything. Projectors can only do so much. Some of you out there are only getting probably about a good maybe, maybe 50, 60% out of your projector. That's all you're getting. You're not getting what you think you're getting out of your projector. And if you have a dedicated theater room, and if all the lights are out, you're not getting black, you're getting an ashy gray. All right. Um, again, I got to sign out of here real quick. Whew, I'm about to fall over. I got to get some breakfast. I haven't had anything to eat all day. I right, thank you all for taking the time to come in. You have a blessed day. Depending on where you're at, and we have a blessed day anywhere you're at in the world. Um, all the information will be at the bottom for you to check out. Thank you all for your time. I have to go, and God bless.